As the president's poll numbers sag and key races loom, Republicans eye a pathway to flip the House and regain control of the Senate. Joining us now from Florida is the chair of the National Republican Senatorial Committee, Senator Rick Scott. Senator, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. It's good to see you. It's nice seeing you, John. I think we're going to have a great year. We've got great candidates running around the country. Um, we've got some primaries. The Democrats have mm -hmm. primaries. And their primaries, I think Bernie Sanders-type candidates are going to come out. The Biden uh, agenda is very, very, very unpopular. So as long as we raise our money, as uh, long as we you know, focus mm -hmm. on big, bold ideas, I think we're going to have a great November. But you do have a couple of issues, which I will get to in a second. But first of all, I just want to uh, pivot back to Ukraine because the president made a lot of news yesterday at the tail end of that speech that he gave in Warsaw when he seemed to go off script for a second and ad-libbed this. Listen here. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. That seemed to be a dramatic departure from established American policy, where he appeared to be calling for regime change in Russia, take out Vladimir Putin. Uh, his Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, had to promptly walk it back, saying, nope, regime change is not something we're looking for here. But did he play, do you think, right into Putin's hands, who has been really trying to make this something between Russia and the United States, not just Europe? Absolutely. I mean, what Biden needs to stop doing is stop talking and start acting. Um, stop telling Biden or Putin what he's going to do. Start giving him every resource you can to the Ukrainian mm -hmm. people. Rally uh, NATO, do the same thing. I don't get why the MiGs aren't there. We need more anti-aircraft, anti-ship, uh, anti-tank equipment there. Zelensky is telling us what he needs, and he's telling us he doesn't have enough. Thank God Zelensky and the Ukrainian people are willing to defend freedom because, I mean, if they don't, then, you know, where's, where's Putin going to stop? So Biden's got to get this, he's got to start acting and getting these things done and start misspeaking. Stop well, misspeaking. Well, we, we do have a, an inkling of an idea of where Russia might stop when they articulated a new policy yesterday saying we've achieved our goals in the initial phase of this. Now we're going to concentrate on consolidating defense of Donetsk and Luhansk, the Donbass region. That would seem to be an indication that maybe they're giving up on the idea of trying to take over all of Ukraine. Is, is now the time to give Ukraine the weapons it needs to win? Because we've never heard the president say, we're going to help Ukraine win. I know, it's hard to believe. Absolutely. I mean, we have got to help Ukraine win. We've got to push Putin back into Russia. Um, and then let the will of the Russian people decide what happens to Putin. Now, I believe he ought to go to prison for war crimes, but we have got to do everything. Don't, act, don't play to tie, you play to win. Mm. You give them every resources you can, and you do it every second. You're thinking, every second, what else can we do to put Putin back on his heels and have him take his troops back into Russia? That's what we should be doing every second. We have got to win this. You know, we, we, you and I have talked about this uh, before on our program, uh, America Reports, and, and that is that the White House maybe never thought that we were going to be in this position, that, it, you know, three, four days, maybe a week, Putin would have taken over Ukraine, installed a puppet government there, and we'd be dealing with that. I don't think anybody uh, thought that the Ukrainians were going to fight back with the heroic courage uh, that they have. You, you have been trying to do what you can uh, to try to bring Russia to its knees. You've got the Stop Putin Act, which would put Russian oil companies on the so-called entities list. It would put Congress, and not the president, in charge of whether or not the United States does business with Russian oil companies. Do you not trust the president to do it? Well, he's been pretty weak. I mean, I mean, look at he, this should should never have happened. If Biden would have done everything early, if he would sit for all the resources, made sure that made sure that uh, Zelensky had everything he needed, had all the anti-tank, anti-aircraft, anti-ship uh, equipment that he needed, you know, hopefully, you know, Putin would uh, Putin wouldn't have invaded. That would have been think of how many lives would have been saved. Uh, in Ukraine, you look at those pictures um, of the children mm -hmm. dying just because Putin's such a thug, a murderous thug. All right, uh, let's switch to politics now because there's a lot that we've got to look forward to between now and November the 8th. You recently put out an 11-point plan to rescue America, two of the big points of which are, quote, all Americans should pay some income tax to have skin in the game, even if a small amount. Currently, over half of Americans pay no income tax. It also says all federal legislation sunsets in five years. 
if a law is worth keeping, Congress can pass it again. So that would raise taxes on half of Americans and potentially sunset programs like Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Why would you propose something like that in an election year? Sure. Well, John, that's, of course, the Democrat talking point. It's a no, no, it's plan. in the plan. <laughs> it's in well, the plan. But, here's, here, but here's this thing about reality for a second. It's First of all, let's talk but, about but, Medicare. But, Senator, but Senator hang on. John. So it's not a Democratic talking point. It's in the plan. And also in the plan, it says we ought to every year talk about exactly how we're going to fix Medicare and Social Security. Here's what's happening. No one that I know of wants to sunset uh, Medicare or Social Security. But what we're doing is we don't even talk about it. Medicare goes bankrupt in four years. Social Security goes bankrupt in 12 years. I think we ought to figure out how we preserve those programs. Every program that we care about, we ought to state, stop and take the time to preserve those programs. I, I mean, I just fought the postal bill because it put more responsibility on Medicare and took it off the postal service and put mm -hmm. Medicare in a worse position. Now, let's go back, let's talk about taxes for a second. I'll put my record up against anybody on tax cuts. I, tax, I cut taxes and fees a hundred times as governor. But here's what's unfair. Mm -hmm. We have people that don't, that could go to work and have figured out how to have government pay their way. That's not right. They ought to have some mm -hmm. skin in the game. I don't care if it's a dollar. We ought to all be, all be in this together. I'm going to focus, continue to focus on reducing taxes. That's what I've done my whole life. But there's an 11-step plan. Go through it. Everybody's yeah. not going to agree with everything. 128 policy points. Let's be bold. Go to rescueamerica.com. Give me your ideas. Okay. Or you can text America to 22044. Give me your ideas. I want to I want to change this country. The woke left controls everything. And we got to win. And, and we got to change the country. As you said, not everyone agrees with it. And one of the people that doesn't agree with it is Mitch McConnell. Here's what he said. Let me tell you what would not be a part of our agenda. We will not have as part of our agenda a bill that raises taxes on half of the American people and sunsets Social Security and Medicare within five years. That will not be part of a Republican Senate majority agenda. Now, a few days after he said that, you penned a Wall Street Journal op-ed about your plan titled, Why I'm Defying Beltway Cowardice. Are you calling Mitch McConnell a coward? What I'm saying is, what I've, I've been in D.C. for three mm -hmm. years, right? I want to get something done. I went to D.C. to change this country. Look at where we are now. The woke left controls the, you know, the executive branch. They control a lot of our government. They control academia. They control Hollywood. We, I mean, look at it. We have an open border. We've decided we're not going to be energy independent. We've got to change this. You don't know, change it without having a plan. I'm a business guy. When I, when I was in business, I wrote a plan. I surround myself with people. We implemented the plan. When I went for governor, yeah. I had a plan. We've got to have a plan for what we're going to do when we win. We're going to win. We have great people, but let's have a plan. That's why I said, go to Rescue America. Give me your ideas. If, that, if these ideas of mine aren't the best, let's come up with the best ideas out there. I think the majority of your colleagues want to focus on Joe Biden uh, as opposed to <laughs> coming up with a plan that they think that they can sell to the American people about what the Republicans would do. But anyway, I want to move on to something else, and that's Ginny Thomas, the wife of uh, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. She said text and emails to Mark Meadows, the former chief of staff, uh, after the election as well as some members of Congress urging them to do whatever they could to support President Trump's bid to overturn the 2020 election. I mean, she is a conservative activist. She's entitled to her own opinion, but she's also the wife of a Supreme Court justice. There are calls for Clarence Thomas to recuse himself from any future cases involving January the 6th. What do you say? Well, first off, I admire and respect Clarence Thomas. Um, I think he's mm -hmm. been a great Supreme Court justice, and Clarence Thomas, in my opinion, will always do the right thing. Uh, so I, I've not seen in my, <laughs> I've watched Clarence Thomas for years, and I've never always seen seen him do the right thing. Right. Um, what's interesting is that Supreme Court justices are not bound by the same code of ethics that other federal judges are. Chris Murphy, uh, your fellow senator, introduced legislation to change that last summer. Would you support a change? I haven't, I haven't seen the legislation, but, you know, I'm, 
I tell you what, my experience with the Supreme Court is they're, they're trying their best to interpret the laws and do the best they can. I don't agree with everything they do. None of us would. But I think they're trying to do the best they can. Senator Rick Scott of the great state of Florida, always a pleasure. Thank you for having us. All right. Stay John. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Thank you.